We are filming this video in response to the question received from Alexander Turel. Alexander asked us, I have recently come across many circuit boards with multiple planar components in SOE, KFP and BGA cases. What equipment is ideally suited for soldering such components in radio electronics? And how does one operate such equipment? We will now show you how to do that. It is indeed true that most of today's circuit boards use SMD components. For example, this circuit board has almost no deep components that have been widely used in the past. This circuit board can't be repaired using regular soldering iron and following traditional soldering methods. Our radio electronics amateurs, being representatives of the talented Russian people, use anything available for this purpose. Some even rebuild construction dryers for soldering SMD components. But I would like to emphasize one thing. Apart from being incredibly complicated and dangerous, this method also often leads to sad results for the circuit board itself. So it might be better to just use a specialized soldering station. For instance, hot air soldering is one of the best fitted methods for this application. Each microchip case has its own standard size, which is why special nozzles have been designed for each case. This makes soldering easier and prevents damage of the other components and on the microchip itself, since the air temperature is rather high. Now I'll show you how to use the hot air soldering station to unsolder this microchip with the SOP case. Let's turn on this soldering station. I have already selected the best nozzle for this case. We need to set the temperature. The temperature for each case and microchip is indicated in the specifications provided by the manufacturer of the microchip. So before you start soldering the microchip, make sure you have studied the respective reference data. I am setting the temperature as required by the manufacturer and you wait until the soldering station reaches that temperature. Before soldering the microchip, I will apply flux to prevent oxidation and make the soldering process easier. The soldering station has now reached the required mode. I have applied the flux so we can start on soldering. But I would like also to point out that today's electronics is very sensitive to static electricity. So before we start working, we need to make sure that there is absolutely no static voltage coming from anywhere. That's why I will use an anti-static pad and put on an anti-static bracelet to make sure that nothing fails. At home, if you can't really use any anti-static material or tools, you have to at least make sure that your clothes are not synthetic or that the clothes and the objects around cannot be electrified. OK, so now I will unsold the microchip. It will take some time. The soldering station is made in such a way that it heats up the soldering area, that is, the microchip terminals, so that the other components remain intact and the case itself continues to be relatively cold because the heating is concentrated by the microchip terminals only. So our solder has melted. And I now use a tweezers or a special puller to remove the microchip. And hooray, the microchip cannot be easily separated from the circuit board. All the checks remain intact and which is more important, all the components that were located close to the soldering point are safe and working. So we have thus removed the old microchip. Now we'll use a regular soldering iron to clean the tracks a bit. All the extra solder was removed together with the microchip, so there is virtually none left on the board itself.
It's now time to sell the new microchip in place of the old one. To sell the microchip of the kind, we will need a special solder paste that contain, contains flux, finely dispersed tin and other additives. The paste is applied in a small thin layer. The microchip is rather thick, so I won't need any templates and will just mark the tracks. But let us not forget that this has solder, so if we apply too much paste, we will end up with extra solder. Templates help to avoid this problem, but if you're doing this at home, like me, it's much easier to just do it the way we're doing it here. I have distributed the paste rather evenly. Don't be too concerned if some of the paste is visible between the tracks. The tracks won't get locked. When melting, the solder will accumulate on the terminals and tracks due to moisturizing. Now let's take the new microchip and put it onto the circuit board. It's important that the microchip is placed in such a way that the terminals correspond to the tracks exactly. This will ensure the high quality mounting. I have now mounted the microchip. The paste has some adhesive properties, so the microchip won't go anywhere. You can see for yourself that the quality of soldering is high. Everything is in place. Everything is working. We could use a magnifying glass to make sure, but I can see one well enough to see it's definitely OK. So today we showed you how to use special equipment to easily replace seemingly very complex electronic components on a circuit board.